Kathy Bear. I live in Niles, Michigan, and I am 60 years old. When I was 36, I was diagnosed with a breast cyst. And two years later, when I was 38 and my closest sister was 39, she was diagnosed with breast cancer in both breasts. And so in the reading that I was doing to try to learn more about her cancer, I discovered that the only way to find out if a cyst is truly a cyst is to do further tests. And so I did that and within a month I was diagnosed. And then six months later, my 30-year-old sister was diagnosed. So we, you know, since then discovered that we carry the mutated BRCA1 gene, which we inherited through my father, whose both of his sisters had breast cancer, one at a very young age, and then her daughter had breast cancer at age 30. So since then, we, all of us, except our oldest sister, doesn't carry the gene, but the three of us have all had breast cancer on both sides. One of us has had ovarian cancer, third stage, but she's doing very well, works full time. My second breast cancer was when I was 57, three years ago. Well, for us and our family, we never really feel like we get on the other side of cancer because of the high risk it carries for um, you know, breast cancer and ovarian cancer with that gene. But um, we have learned to cope very well with it. We, um, none of us have had um, mastectomies. We all had lumpectomies with radiation. We have lived over 20 years with no metastasis, which sometimes women now, because of the fear of it, they will have a mastectomy just because they're so afraid of getting the cancer. But we've gotten a hold of it. We, we all study as much as we can. We live with that sort of um, over our heads, but it doesn't really affect us or make us fearful. When someone gets cancer again, we say, well, okay, we know how to cope. We know what to do. We know how to help each other. And that's what we do, and um, it, it's worked out very well. We've had other cancer and illnesses in our family, too. And so we've been able to help other people because we know how to cope. You know, the big C, especially, and for me it was 1985, the biggest fear, of course, was death because that's what cancer usually means. And at that time, I can remember trying to read about it, and there was really only one book at the time that dealt um, in depth with breast cancer. And now, of course, there's so many more. But that's, you know, that's what you fear. I had three young children. I feared that I wouldn't live to see them grow old, wouldn't be able to, you know, help raise them. But, you know, I think anything that you're afraid of, that's you're ignorant of it in some ways, and what helps you get control of it is to learn about it, put it right there on the table, try to study all sides of it as much as you can, and for me, to talk about it really helps. Some people just want, they don't want to know, they just want a, somebody to tell them what to do, but that doesn't work for me. I have to really study about it, and then I'm not as fearful. And it did help me that, you know, I had been reading a lot, and I knew what my sister was going to do. And in that one month, I had gotten a little more handle on it. And I think in the back of my mind, I suspected that I might have it just from all the reading that I had done. And in fact, that did help me to be a little less fearful. No knowledge for me is power. In, um, in my life, I helped to start a support group for breast cancer patients. And we have a lending library in that, report, in that uh, group that um, members can take out books on any subject to do with breast cancer. And that helps them to be more knowledgeable. And we have speakers come in. And uh, people say it really does help them, too. Well, the reading for me, you know, the knowledge really helped me. Uh, of course, family and friends, and the fact that they were willing to listen to me and let me talk about my fears, and especially, you know, my sisters. We could talk about it, and we could say, now, what do you think I should do? You know, and, and they had read, too, so we could talk about it. And, you know, you, you, talk, you, you trust your doctors, but, you know, you've got to go to doctors who have had a lot of experience with breast cancer. And so in talking with my sisters and other people who are knowledgeable, that helped me to cope. And, you know, your friends, if you have friends who, who are there through thick and thin, uh, those are the ones that really help you, and you find out who those are, and they really did help me, and my church family helped me greatly, too. So I think that I could cope with just about anything. Uh, we had had illnesses in our family before, but they weren't me, you know, and they, they weren't my sisters, but um, 
I think that's the biggest lesson that if I just take my time and, you know, uh, learn about what the problem is that you know there'll be bad times there'll definitely be very bad times and there'll be times when you know when you're in bed at night and even if you're with your husband you know that that's the worst you know because your mind goes off and you're thinking of the worst things possible but you you have to keep thinking can I get through today and you go yes I can and then when it's tomorrow you do the same thing and you realize you've you've progressed through a month and um, that's how you cope. In most cases, you don't have to be in a big hurry. You know, you feel, oh, I've got cancer. I've got to get it out of there. In most cases, it's been there for a while. There's very few cases where you have to, you know, where it's so um, aggressive that you have to act rapidly. You can take your time, try to learn as much as you can, you know, think about what you want to do, and then make your decision. You don't have to be in such a panic. And I, I think that's good advice because most people do panic. They think, got to get it out of there before it can get anywhere else. I think um, in a lot of ways it's made me less fearful, you know, of anything. You know, what's, you always think, well, what's the worst thing that can happen? Well, you could die from cancer, you know. There's actually worse things than that. If it was your children or something else, to me, that would be much worse. But it's met, made me less fearful because, you know, what's there to be afraid of? You only have this one life. You actually only have this one day, this one minute right now. You better be doing with it what you want to be doing with your life because none of us are promised anything. You, 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 we all know we can get hit by a truck, but when you get breast cancer, then you know what it's like to get hit by the truck, but then you just go on. So I think that's part of, part of it for me is that I'm less fearful of anything. If you're newly diagnosed, Number one, take your time. Number two, if you're the kind of person who, who wants to know, try to find out as much as you can. There are certain books that will really tell you the whole story. And I urge women, even before they've made the decision about what to do, to attend a, a good support group if they can find one, because there's no substitute for talking with other people who have walked the walk that you're about to walk. They've been through things that you're going to face. They might be able to help you with uh, questions to be sure to ask so that you can get a full picture of, of your prognosis and what your treatment might entail. And um, you can talk to your husband and your friends, but when you talk to people who have had breast cancer and have been through it and they're going through the same thing you did, they can really help you.